I'm going to call upon the stage a very gifted Sarah Gordon again, CEO of Satarla. Uh, joining her for this panel will be Abdullah Al Shamrani, CEO of the Saudi Geological Survey, Ali Saeed Al Katani, COO at Central Mining Holding, Ros Bapu, partner and head of private equity at Resource Capital Funds, Jim Peterson, chairman and chief executive officer at Valo Metals Corp, very interesting projects in North America, specifically in Brazil and Saleh Al Maglut, Executive Vice President, Exploration and Resource Development at Maden. Please join us here on stage and I appreciate your presence. Thank you. Sarah, please take it away from me. Please, please. Thank you very much to our fabulous panelists. If you'd like to say hello to one another and take any seats you would like. To our fabulous audience, thank you for coming in and working with us here today. So this apparently has been billed as the debate. Okay, so, so to our wonderful panelists, the rules are no biting, no kicking, <laughs> no scratching in this, in this debate. Don't worry, I'm, I'm seriously hoping that won't happen. I'll have lost control if, if that has incurred. Um, so the title of this session, as you can see on the screen behind me, is all about how do we generate a new age of exploration within this region. And as somebody who started out as an exploration geologist, so I'm much more comfortable in my walking boots with my rock hammer. I'm getting a thumbs up from our donor, fantastic. <laughs> so that is my, my natural habitat. But this is something where around the world, explorers have been looking for rocks for, for many, many, many years, not necessarily to dig something out of the ground, but because we just like what those rocks have. But of course, here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in the broader region, we have the most phenomenal opportunity to not only learn from a great wealth of historical exploration, but then say, OK, hang on a second. We've got an opportunity to learn from that and then go one better. How do we make exploration as, as good and as, as successful as it possibly could be here within our region. So I'm going to start off by inviting our panelists to very quickly introduce themselves. So they're going to say their name, where they work, and their role title. So Ali, if you'd like to start off, please. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ali Al-Gahtani. I am the chief operating officer of uh, Central Mining Company. Uh, we own and operate uh, a company called uh, Saudi Comidat. We are one of the biggest uh, contractors, service contractors in Saudi Arabia, working with Ma'adin. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ali. Saleh. Uh, good morning. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, still good morning. <laughs> Not there yet. Uh, my name is Saleh al -Maglouf. I'm Executive uh, Vice President of Exploration and Resource Development in Ma'adin. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Saleh. Jim. Hi, Jim Peterson from Discovery Group in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm Chairman and CEO of Valor Metals Corp. Fantastic. Thank you. Ross. Yeah, my name is Ross Bapu. I'm a partner and head of private equity mature funds with resource capital funds based in Denver, Colorado. And my background is metallurgical engineering, so uh, you'll have to bear with me as we go through exploration here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we'll forgive you for being an engineer. <laughs> okay. But from an engineer to a geologist. Okay, I'm engineer too, but oh. uh, before introducing <laughs> myself, let me just uh, welcome you all in Saudi Arabia. And uh, thank you all for uh, being with us here in the beautiful city of uh, Riyadh. Uh, I know some of you, we have been busy yesterday and today and did not go around Riyadh, but I'm sure once you have a time, go around Riyadh and you will enjoy the city. Uh, the second, uh, thank you for making this forum really successful. Your participation and effective participation around the globe making this uh, 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 forum very successful. And this is our way of making sure that the mineral going through and a joint collaboration between the people around the globe to help uh, their humanity. Back again to your uh, question, I'm Abdullah Shamrani, uh, CEO of uh, Saudi Geological Survey. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think a round of applause for our fabulous panel. Thank you. Excellent. So now, if it all goes wrong, at least we've had a round of applause. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. So, so let's start off. Let's start off with the entire globe. So, Jim, I'm going to come to you first and say, given your 
phenomenal experience with exploration. <laughs> Is that going really? Uh oh. Your phenomenal experience, I'm going to build you up here, mm. of exploration around the world. From your perspective, what does really good exploration look like? And then I'm going to come to Salof here to hear from your perspective. Okay, now let's talk about exploration from a Kingdom of Saudi Arabia perspective. But let's just start off on that global scale. Jim. Okay, but I'd first like to say that to call this conference spectacular is an understatement. <laughs> We'd like to thank you very much for hosting us here. And this is one of the best conferences I've ever been to and definitely the best in the mining sector ever, so thank you. I'm not a geologist, but I've been involved with exploration projects all over the Americas and all over the globe. And the one thing I would uh, perhaps offer to the kingdom is that you can't ignore the venture capital the spirit of the venture capital markets in mineral exploration. And bureaucrats don't make discoveries. Wildly ambitious geochemists, geophysics, maybe even engineers coming up with their own solution to a problem, they're the ones that make discoveries that add major impact. There's a very well-developed marketplace in Toronto, Vancouver, Perth, Sydney to use as a model, but um, I think that you can't ignore the ambitions and the success that comes out of generating excitement around making discoveries by junior mining companies. And it's a great part of the ecosystem. I think we'll add a lot of value if you support it. And then the second thing that the kingdom could be quite helpful in is that the sector is subject to the vagaries of the cycl cyclical nature of the market. And so in market downturns, no money gets put to the projects so some projects are going into production now that were discovered 50 years ago. That's too long. No one has time for that. And if you've got the uh, capital to support the companies and the projects in the market downturns, the venture cap market will take care of it in the, ma in the market upswings. But just to keep things moving along rapidly, I think would save you decades and bring these minerals that you need into production <coughs> years earlier. So Jim, just to make sure that that we understand that. So when we're, as geologists, understanding what we think might be in the ground, it's all about how certain are we that the copper or the cobalt or the lithium or whatever is actually there. Is what you're saying, OK, when the market is very cyclical, how do we make sure that where it does dip down actually doesn't go too far so it's not as big a risk as it might otherwise be? Is that correct? Well, the risk is all efforts on the project stop. Yeah. And then the management team gives up. And then a new company starts five years later, and they don't know what the other team knew. And so it takes 50 years to get things to production instead of five. And um, so I think that's an important part to recognize. That the one thing that uh, you also have here that is so amazing is you're thinking about actually building the processing facilities. So not only can you help mineral rich and money, but you'll actually be the, provide the customer for the mineral projects as well, which is incredibly important. And no other country in the world is doing that. Fantastic. So, talking about Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Saleh, do you have, would you agree with what Jim's just said? Do you think it's different here? And then perhaps I'll come to Ali. Uh, not really. Uh, it's similar to the other world. The, the new thing here is that it's, it's a region that is, uh, didn't, was not expo explored effectively in the past 30 years or so. And in Ma'adan, for example, uh, we have built a strategy that the exploration, just to uh, uh, comment on what Jim just said about the cyclic part of the commodity itself. And I think we le I learned personally from my previous uh, experience in Saudi Aramco that the exploration is a core function and it, it should not be um, impacted by the cyclic uh, uh, economy, but rather it should be stable and this way you build a portfolio for the future. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, in, in, uh, in Ma'ad, and we have put a strategy that takes our budget for exploration 10 times yeah. as much uh, for, the, for the next five years. And that is mainly to, to make sure uh, that the resource is available for the future. I mean, yes, we don't need it now, yeah. but we need to make, uh, build a portfolio that is rich enough to sustain at least 20 to 30 years. So this is part of the Ma'adan strategy 2040, and it fits, obviously, as, as part of the Kingdom uh, Vision 2030. Um, 
the ecosystem, the difference here in Saudi Arabia, the ecosystem uh, currently is being built in terms of data, technology, partnership, and even vendors, uh, surface providers that, that are uh, providing the services. So very important, I think, the previous uh, panel discussions, one of the colleagues mentioned the richness of the data and the requirement for to have that data. And it, it is actually currently done, part of it is done by the, the Ministry of Industry, but a lot uh, focused from Ma'adan on particular uh, licenses, exploration licenses, that will be covered, inshallah, in the, in the near future with all kind of surveys, geophysical, uh, potential, and uh, surface, and airborne. Additionally, this wealth of data that you receive requires analysis, requires modeling, requires interpretation. So you need a technologies, you require, you need a technology that, ha that is more innovative, that uses uh, artificial intelligence to expedite the process. I am shocked, to tell you the truth, coming from the oil and gas business, to see an exploration cycle in, in, in a oil and gas business sh way shorter than what it is in the mining and exploration of minerals. It's, uh, and my aspiration is to squeeze that as much as possible. And the only way to do that is collecting data and using the latest and greatest technologies. Additionally, we are, as you all perhaps heard the announcement yesterday about the, the press releases, we are actually looking and seeking partnerships with companies that has an edge in technologies that will allow us to acquire, process, turbid, and drill the holes as quick as possible. And finally, I think the ecosystem requires a talent. Mm -hmm. And the talent, as far as I'm concerned, need to be developed jointly by the, the industry and the academia. And the academia, currently, there is many universities in, this, in Saudi Arabia that requires us from our side, obligation from our side, to meet with them and design a curriculum that will allow the next generation talented uh, Saudi, young Saudis, geologists, geophysicists, and ge geoscience in general, to be part of this business. And so we're working on this currently. So, so to that, with regards to the type of skills that you're seeing are being needed within exploration, I imagine they're changing. So back when I was at university, which of course was only a few years ago, um, because I'm so, I look so young, um, it was a case of actually it was all about field work. How many rocks had you actually seen? Yes, maybe a little bit of visualization, because as geologists we love maps. But there was hardly any machine learning ability to code and actually really interrogate those data sets. So are you seeing the types of talent that we need within exploration changing? Thank you for asking that. Obviously, I think the most of the audience here is, is geologists, including the front, <laughs> the front line. Uh, I'm a, ge I'm a ge geophysicist, by the way. I'll okay. forgive you. So I, I understand exactly. <laughs> I think uh, the field work is a must. This is uh, elementary, Annie. It, it, it makes no difference. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense to have a geologist doing work mainly in the office. What makes it different now is the wealth of data. You cannot process, interpret, and model the data that you, you are receiving, be it soft data or hard data, using the old technologies. It will be, we will be in a span of 10 years to find it. But if you use the latest and greatest uh, algorithms, uh, artificial intelligence, to process these data, I think there is a great opportunity mm. to squeeze the time. And I, I, the, uh, the disciplines required to do that, we still need the geologists, the geophysicists, the geochemists, and so on and so forth, but we also need the data scientists, the, the, who are also exposed to geology or understand a little bit of geology. And how about on, say, the ESG or the sustainability side of things? Because it's just as important to collect 
those data sets during exploration as it is what's going on in the subsurface. So understanding both the subsurface, but then also the surface data sets. Yes. What, what do you think to that? Well, uh, uh, as you know, the exploration phase has little footprints as mm. far as ESG is concerned. I think it's the mining part that requires uh, more uh, detailed ESG. But as far as exploration is concerned uh, here in, in the shield, in the, the Arabian shield, I mean, we are mandated now in Ma'adan not only just to look at the shield, but to look at the, the entire kingdom. And that is challenging. And obviously, when you, when you go entire kingdom, you are going to be facing with local uh, people, cities, infrastructures, and so on and so forth. So we are mandated and, and obligated to make sure that we do the, the we, we respect the environment and we do our social uh, and, and governance according to the regulations that is in the industry. And Ma'adan is very well known uh, as, I'm not the expert to speak in the ESG, but very well known in terms of ESG currently in Saudi Arabia and the footprint that they have. So, alhamdulillah, يعني, we are doing very well so far. <coughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much, Saleh. Ali, how about yourself? And then I'll come across to another engineer. <laughs> I'll come across to Abdullah. Ali, how about yourself? Uh, I think uh, we can get out from this panel by concentrating on what is the time-consuming part of the exploration. Yeah. If you see it, it's not the technical part. I can bring geologists, machines, drills within a month and do uh, in another month a huge work in exploration. 60 to maybe 80% of the work or time consumed is in bureaucracy, in the licensing part. And not only in Saudi Arabia, in all over the world. And uh, to tell you the truth, if we are not going to compete in, co in bureaucracy with other countries, people will not come mm. to do exploration in our... If you see exploration, we are all gathered here to make investment. None, one single dollar will be spent without exploration. This means that it's a bottleneck. We need to understand it and it needs to be tackled because 90% of the work is bureaucracy. Yeah. I, I, I have been involved in many uh, licensing and it takes forever just to do the licensing and the uh, approval from different government agencies. And uh, maybe we can get out from this panel by suggesting how to reduce this uh, time, which is really, as he mentioned, one of the companies uh, left the market because during the uh, exploration time, it took them so much, the copper price went down, they said, it's not an economical anymore. Yeah. So we are not like Aramco, and this is when where we uh, should not think mining is not oil. Mining, we are scratching the surface. Oil is deep, and oil, Aramco has unprecedented authority over all over the kingdom. Okay. They can come and drill in the back of my house. I can't tell them no. <laughs> Whereas the other uh, mining uh, companies, no. <clears throat> you need to go through so many things. You need to go to the local governance. You need to go to tribal sheikhs uh, to uh, ask them whether this will contradict with, with their uh, ancestors' lands. These things are very important and cannot be ignored. And at many times, no, you are not allowed to go here. You need to go somewhere else. It's not economical. But I think we need to spend the time on reducing bureaucracy and competing with other countries to reduce bureaucracy. So I guess with that, in terms of um, trying to, to, I guess, streamline the time that it takes, perhaps, for that yes. licensing, um, if I'm understanding you correctly, there are some aspects that can be shortened, mainly, say, the bureaucracy with regards to different government departments, etc. However, there are also some parts that you can't necessarily shorten, so the engagement with communities, etc. Yes. That always takes a lot of time and needs that time. Is that correct? Yes. But again, again if you see uh, how far the, the government or the ministries went in terms of digitization mm. and uh, 
uh, online services. And I think uh, GS, uh, SGS is working on digitizing and mapping the whole country in terms of minerals. What I, I inspire really is to go and combine the, 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 their work with forbidden areas. Just mark the areas where people or companies cannot mm. explore. This will make half, save half of the time. If we just leave it to individual efforts, they will, it will take so much time and it will never be done right. So actually roll in some of those areas and say, look, don't even bother exploring yes, here yes. because you're going to hit various blockers. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. So, so you mentioned our wonderful friends at the Geological Survey. Abdullah, do you have anything to add to this discussion in terms of, especially with regards to a lot of the data um, that you have been collecting over the last little while? Good. Uh, between me and you, I should uh, say that uh, none of this will work. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, thank you, and I totally agree with you that uh, we need to do more and more and uh, utilizing the uh, technology to help us to be faster and uh, doing uh, more and more. The other industry, it is really faster than the mining. Sometimes I would say that because the miner they, or the countries, they believe that you know, this mineral, nobody can steal it, okay, and it's available, we can extract it in the right time. But uh, uh, looking for uh, exploration, it should continue, as uh, you say it, in, in the right way. The good thing that, or the thing which we should look for in uh, order to expedite uh, the exploration or making sure that it is uh, easy, first at all, we have to make all of the information available. And this SGS, at SGS, we make all the information available, and it's free uh, of cost for an investor. <coughs> he can access it around the globe. Uh, more than that, also, we scan all the information which is available in Saudi Arabia, more than uh, 120,000 uh, meter being uh, uh, scanned, and we make it available also for uh, the investor. Uh, Technology, I think it's going to help us, and it will help us more and more in order to use the money and the time. Unfortunately, we are not 100 percent in general uh, in, in investing in the technology. Uh, it will help us to expedite, to compete, and making sure that when I can explore or when I can uh, look for those uh, minerals, because again, it is a cycle of, of uh, economy. In SGS, also, we take uh, some initiative this year because we know that uh, the whole country it is uh, underexplored, and we say that we need to bring more uh, of uh, small and junior companies to explore uh, the country. We are following the law, which is saying uh, geology bring mineralogy, okay? And uh, we are inviting the uh, uh, junior company, uh, small company, to come in Saudi Arabia, and they say for them, from this place, and I have said that in Australia last time, if you drill a hole in your coast, I will drill a hole in my coast. If you analyze the sample at your coast, I will analyze the other sample at my coast. This is almost something like sharing 50% of their expense which they uh, supposed to uh, invest. But before going there, we have to make sure that you know, the right assessment given to you in, in, in exploring uh, uh, the area, uh, we need to, uh, let me say, invest and utilize in the technology to help us and uh, moving uh, forward. And Abdullah, have you seen any really exciting advances in technology recently that is being used to try and understand the subsurface? I know that, um, I mean, ever since I was a university, people would come up to me and say, oh, do you have that piece of technology where you can see what is under the ground? And of course, the geophysicists always say, oh, well, that's, that's us. But being truly honest about it, it's a case of what we're doing is we're not seeing what's under the ground. We're collecting data that then can give us an indication of what might be there. Have you seen any exciting advancements recently or in the survey? Are you using anything that's really cool? Well, uh, we have si uh, seen it uh, honestly in uh, uh, two projects. The first one, it was uh, the uranium projects where all the data being collected and 100% utilized. 
unfortunately, maybe in the traditional way of utilizing the data, we utilize only 20% and the remaining 80% not being efficiently utilized. And the second one, it is in Khnegiya, which has been uh, awarded uh, last year, where we collected all the data and we developed a model where it gives us the 3D model of, of the uh, 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 minerals under uh, the ground. Those things really giving an, a sort of imagination, okay, for the miner or investor, what do I have and how I can go? I'm a 100% believer. In, in the technology. Yes, my mobile sometime, if it did not work, I cannot deal with it, I will give it to my son. And then we have to give the uh, young generation the chance to engage with us. We give them a sort of, of uh, let me say, uh, uh, dose of geology, and they will help us. They are the expert, really. The time for your hammer, it is not there anymore, okay? We have to shift. And those two examples really encouraging, and I would say that, yes, it will help, and we will see uh, more and more coming in the future. In uh, 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 SGS, we are now about uh, forming a sort of consortium from different uh, uh, organizations around the globe to help us in uh, having something like this, in, in a supercomputer where it will analyze the data and bring the three model available for uh, an investor uh, uh, who are really interested to, to come to Saudi Arabia. Brilliant. So exciting. So with regards to this, Ross, whilst, okay, so whilst we all know that geologists find <coughs> the rock, the metallurgical engineers are the really clever people who can then actually turn it into something useful. But more from the, the money perspective, having heard what we've got here, so it's about making sure we've got lots of really good quality data and interpretation of that data, and then shortening that timeline that it takes to get from tripping up over the rock to actually turning that into a mine and being able to produce that metal. Does this make you more or less inclined to invest in this region? <laughs> well, first of all, let me start by saying, um uh, about four years ago, I met with uh, His Excellency, the Vice Minister of Mining here, and he talked about building this mining industry in Saudi Arabia, uh, and within only a very few short years, they've come to having a conference like this, attended the way it is, which is truly impressive. Um, yesterday, Mike Henry talked about the timeline of going from exploration to building a mine was about 20 years for BHP. Uh, as, a, as an investor, a 20-year horizon is too long. Too long. Yeah. You know, we're a, as a private equity fund, uh, we invest uh, funds that are, have a 10-year life, and we're looking for hold periods typically of five years. So the question is then, if we invest in a, in a, in a country like Saudi Arabia, how can we realize on that investment over some finite period of time? What, what I guess I'm really excited by about this region, and the, I'm giving you a long answer, uh, yep. but the answer is yes, we would. <laughs> um, uh, so so what, what's exciting is, uh, number one, the greatest, un, uh, uh, the greatest risk, the greatest reason we wouldn't invest in a place has to do with fiscal, fiscal uncertainty. And again, Mike Henry talked about that last, uh, yesterday morning. Fiscal uncertainty is, is, is a killer of, uh, of investment. And what I'm very pleased by is the mining code that was drafted here in Saudi Arabia, the newly enacted code that provides a Western investor with great certainty. And, and that's very, very important for us. Um, as a private equity fund, we've invested in 50 countries uh, over 25 years and 200 different projects around the world. So we've had lots of, of good experiences and bad experiences. So I may not be an expert, but I've certainly got the battle scars uh, from the expert uh, from the from the uh, background of investing in this space. And, and and when I look at what Saudi Arabia is doing, it provides certainty for the investor. And now, most importantly, comes to the licenses and and obtaining licenses. Uh, there's a, a great example of uh, of Golden Minerals, a, a private company here in uh, Saudi Arabia that just a year ago was granted five licenses. Out of those five licenses, they have made two discoveries, very, very interesting, attractive discoveries. That's unheard of to make uh, 
a discovery that quickly after being granted licenses. Um, and, and I think it just demonstrates that there is tremendous, tremendous prospectivity here. Uh, a couple years ago, I was given a book on the geology of Saudi Arabia from the 1950s. And, and that book had all sorts of great graphs, great pictures of what's here. But there's actually been very little done since the 1950s in terms of mineral exploration. Certainly oil exploration is, is a different story, but from a mineral exploration perspective, it's underexplored. So the question for me is, is how do we attract a junior mining sector? The, the, the companies, these junior companies that will do generative grassroots exploration. And, and I think um, what's being done and what's being talked about from the SGS is vitally important and I think it will lead to accelerating timelines and making investments for groups like me much more attractive. So I'm very excited by what I'm seeing. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Ross. That was the right answer. When that, then I've got to let you out <laughs> of the room rather than pinning you down and saying, no, you will invest. Um, but Jim, from that license perspective, you know, so this is this um, length of time that is often needed to get your exploration license or your water permits, et cetera. Um, it takes a long time everywhere, doesn't it? Have you seen any good examples around the world where different regions have got this right? Or are there any really bad examples that we should try and stay clear of? I won't name any names of countries, but oh. uh, actually some countries are a lot longer than what you were talking about. <laughs> yes. um, and then the worst thing in the world is the quicksand, the changing, the walking back of rules, um, social pressures that affect uh, weak governments and cause them to change their mind and basically um, leave the companies and the investors and the companies hanging. It's okay to be take a long time as long as you lay it out clearly and the path is understood by all and then they can, they have the expectations and their investors have realistic expectations. So it's not really about how long it takes, you're just not going to attract some people if you take too long. But if you change your mind, you're going to lose people quick. They're, investors will flee. So is it about stability then? It's about clarity <laughs> and it's about staying, you know, being true to your word, what you've written down. Brilliant. So stay true to your word. Um, Sally, I wanted to come back to something that you said at the beginning between oil and gas and mining. Um, now, I grew up overlooking the North Sea, so Aberdeen and that region, which of course pales into insignificance compared to here in, in the kingdom. Um, from your perspective, and you mentioned that you were quite surprised perhaps when you came across the exploration within mining compared to oil and gas. What were some of the main differences, especially with regards to the time that exploration takes in mining compared to oil I and gas? I think the, the, main, the main difference is the utilization of technologies. Uh, the oil and gas business uh, had great opportunities in the 80s, and I'm talking now exploration seismic, for example, uh, has advanced uh, tremendously since that time in terms of uh, design of acquisition and in terms of algorithms. And in the same time, uh, the availability recently, or at least in the past, 20 years or so of supercomputers that helped or enabled the data to be visualized. Uh, the mining or the exploration for minerals did not really capitalize on that. And I believe that that learning from the oil and gas business can be transferred to the uh, exploration of minerals. It's the same principle, and it should not be different. The only difference is the target or the depth so if we design our acquisitions and processing and interpretation to fit the shallower subsurface and use the same technologies, obviously modifying the algorithms and using the supercomputers and the artificial intelligence, I think we can squeeze that. And that is, a, that is a, a, I would say, a main difference between the oil and gas exploration and the mineral exploration. And um, feel free not to answer this. Um, have you, in exploration at Marden, been poaching exploration experts, especially with regards to data from Saudi Aramco? No, I can't. They're in front of me right now. 
<laughs> no, I, uh, with all due respect to my colleagues in, in Saudi Aramco, uh, again, if I remember, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, all the geologists, geophysicists, the geoscience in general, and oil and gas business exploration um, have studied, developed, learned for that purpose. Uh, the mineral expo the exploration of minerals is a bit different. Right, currently, right now, the only university we have in the in the kingdom is King Abdulaziz in Jeddah, who is specialized in minerals, okay, geology, minerals. The rest of the the universities they teach, or they educate, or graduate uh, the the talents mainly for geologists and geophysicists, mainly for the hydrocarbon business. Yeah. And I think we need to change that, or at least supplement it with education and emphasis and focus on minerals. Now that we have uh, uh, the kingdom has enabled uh, SGS, uh, the Ministry of, of, uh, of Industry and Minerals, uh, to build this industry, I think I believe that there is um, a, a big play, I mean room, large room to um, uh, improve it also. Um, Mr. Ali has talked about the duration of licenses. And it is a fact. We face it too. But I, I believe it's because it's new. It hasn't been done before. I mean, before it's only one or two companies in the kingdom. But now when you have foreign investors and locals getting interested in the industry, they will require licenses, obviously. So the ministry <coughs> itself is learning from itself. That's, that's very important. Again, data, I think uh, Dr. Abdullah has mentioned this very clearly, and they have an, uh, a campaign, and we have a campaign also. And this will help us a lot, definitely. Brilliant. Um, Mr. Ali, do you have anything with regards to the talent that you make use of within your organization? Has that been changing in terms of the skills that they have? Well, it's up to now, it's very difficult for uh, mining industry to attract real talent for a long time. Yeah. Because as even Maaden uh, is concerned, they are, uh, mining is working in the middle of the desert. And uh, you cannot compete with the uh, uh, ministries and uh, Aramco and the other uh, institutions where they, ha we are, they are in the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in fact, we are even not competing with them anymore. We are competing with the NEOM, with the new projects. And uh, there is a, a challenge in the talent. However, I think it's not the, the main issue here mm -hmm. because the... the uh, mining industry is still it's, uh, at its infancy and before it, it gets developed to maturity you will not be able to attract people for a long time because they are always compared. I remember I went to my board once upon a time and they say we need to uh, give uh, our engineers uh, housing loans like Aramco or like Sabic. <laughs> yeah. They said no. Anybody <laughs> wants to, to go to Aramco let them go because we are not Aramco, we are not Sabic, we are not... And again, the same thing with the uh, exploration technology Aramco is using. Uh, they are using, uh, what they call it, the remote sensing, they are using uh, what the uh, uh, geophysics. Uh, we don't need it in, in mining. Also, we don't have the capital that Aramco is able to, to fund. If Aramco wants to do something, they will do it. If we want to do it, we need to, to prove that it will make money. <laughs> and the commodity price is not low. And then we, we want to make it. We are, as Mr. Shamrani said, we are using 3D modeling. We are using all these things. Because without it, you cannot quantify your resources. But it's not as elaborate as what Aramco is using. Because... It's the biggest uh, oil company in the world. And this analogy is really hurting us. <laughs> because when somebody is so rich next to you and you are always comparing yourself to, you will not reach to his richness <laughs> no matter what you do. <laughs> so thank you for that, Ali. So what I'm going to do is ask each of you for, for one action or one change that you would like to see 
within the exploration industry here that would help us take it to the next level. And there's one rule with this. You're not allowed to say, please, please give us Saudi Aramco's budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> <a> dream. <laughs> so, Ali, how about yourself? If you could change one thing or a step change in one area, what would it be? What uh, I want the ministry could do, if I, I, I would like to pledge them to do, is to have Absher. We have a, a system called Absher for our own uh, government relationship. And it's a very efficient system. They should use something like that system to make life easy for exploration, licenses, and getting the license. You have more than nine government agencies that involved during the licensing process. Have them in a portal, have a digital maps, show me where it's forbidden not to do any, any, uh, any exploration, and then do it as fast as Absher is doing it, because it is a fight and competition about bureaucracy. If somebody else will do it for somebody or investor in Africa faster than us, he will go there. Yeah, brilliant. That's Excellent. So bring it all together into that portal yes. and also tell us where we can't go. Yes. Awesome. Mr. Saleh, how about yourself? If anything, I really want to do and expedite as, as, as much as possible is building the local talent here yep. and expertise. Fantastic local talent and expertise. Jim. Between now and <clears throat> the next conference, I'd like to have <clears throat> the ability to get together and have a kingdom-wide site visit looking at the geology. I think that would be great. So a bit of a field trip to see and also interact with the people and, and, and if there were any questions and really uh, start a dialogue, I think that would be helpful for all concerned. And we get excited about the geology too. Yeah, if anybody wants to organize a site visit, you've got at least yeah. two people signing yeah. up we'll do right here. You. You're almost welcome. We'll <laughs> take you by helicopter just to see the whole area and a bit of visualization. Okay. It's a done well, deal. Done. Excellent. Ross, how about yourself? Well, I think my take would be a little different. I'd like to see expansion of the Saudi stock exchange uh, to where it would be supportive of a junior mining sector. Yes. So I'd like to see junior mining companies come here and be able to raise money on the, on the Saudi stock exchange and pump that money into generative exploration within the country, within the kingdom. Fantastic. Excellent, Mr. Blair. Good. Uh, th th thank you for uh, really your reflection. And uh, I would like just to reflect to Mr. Gahpani pertaining the licensing and the bureaucracy, which you are saying. We are in a learning, uh, honestly, uh, journey. And in 2021, we uh, launched an investment law where it will help the investor and making sure that you know, we are transparent and uh, we are also fair with all uh, investor. Uh, the candid feedback always is helped. And uh, once you have any uh, feedback, it's really matter for us because it will help us to move and move. My reflection uh, or the action which I would like to say that, you know, we should learn from others like oil and, and the gas. And at the same time, we should invest and invest in two things, technology and uh, human capital. The future is really huge demand in the minerals. And we are going to see a shortage in the explorer, but we need to uh, uh, offer that by making sure that you know, we have the right technology and in the same time, we bring uh, more uh, uh, investment in the human capital. Brilliant. So I think with <coughs> that, everybody, if I can invite you to please put your hands together for this phenomenal panel exploring how do we take exploration to the next level. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thanks, Sarah. Cool. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. Enjoyed your conference.